La nostra zona, la, la Garfagnana, è una zona che storicamente, circa dal 1900, eh, è conosciuta per l'escavazione del marmo. Il mondo del marmo prima era basato sicuramente assolutamente su una lavorazione del tutto manuale, quindi le persone, molte persone dovevano andare a lavorare manualmente il materiale. Con l'applicazione, con l'arrivo delle nuove tecnologie è diventato tutto più veloce, è diventata più veloce l'escavazione perché adesso già in cava si, si escava in maniera diversa, più sicura e eh, anche eh, facendo meno danni ambientali. I think the stone is timeless and um, I think it's the ultimate medium. The marble's got a spirit to it, it's got an energy to it, it's got a, a kind of um, history, uh, it's got the weight of many years behind it. It's got mass, it's got fragility. So there's vulnerability at the same time as having mass, which is something I've never experienced with a material before. In questa area le lavorazioni si sono susseguite in cento anni e l'attività e le modalità di estrazione del marmo sono cambiate notevolmente con le tecnologie e anche con le modalità di lavorazione che permettono dei risultati che cento anni fa erano impensabili. Perciò abbiamo cercato di impiegare nel quartier generale e nelle sedi i difetti che, principali dei nostri materiali, però visti sotto l'occhio di un design, in modo da poter far vedere che un difetto non è un difetto, ma è una qualità del materiale. La cooperativa Puana eh, ha creduto fin dall'inizio nel progetto del Digital Stone Project e nelle sculture digitali, Uh, perché crede che il futuro del, del design, delle sculture e della lavorazione specifica del marmo passi anche da questa nuova tecnologia. Visto che però, come detto, tutto il lavoro artistico, la storia, quindi la, la parte di lavorazione è sempre stata effettuata nelle zone eh, vicine a noi, ma abbiamo pensato all'epoca di realizzare un progetto che prevedesse l'applicazione dell'ultima tecnologia che il mercato proponeva. Eh, furono acquistati dei robot, de, de, delle macchine a 5 assi interpolati, scanner laser, eccetera, e da lì è nato il nostro progetto. The Digital Stone Project is a non-for-profit organization that um, I founded around about 2002. In 2012, I came to Italy and met with uh, the guys at Garfagnana and Avezion and realized this would be a perfect uh, location to bring uh, groups of artists to work with their robotic technologies and develop work and engage in new potential ways to work with the computer through robotics. As we think through the history of carving, we know very clearly the, the tool, the chisel, always left a mark. I mean, we see this in Bernini and Michelangelo. These, all of these marks have expression. And I think what we're beginning to see now is artists and architects recognizing that there is a mark that the robot makes. And why shouldn't that be incorporated in some way? How could that mark have a significant aesthetic value uh, that's intrinsic to the form and the design? We're noticing the tool against the marble and the veining, and there's an interesting patterning and dynamic going on there. So I think that we have to really push on um, how we have control over those tool paths in relationship to the programming. I like the way that um Digitally, uh, there are so many applications for an STL file or an OBJ file. Um, I like that you can work additively or subtractively, and you can make it exactly how you want it. And I think that enables me to be the true architect of the thing that I'm making. One thing I do love about um, all the apps is that, speaking of, about marble, is that it is such a finite and precious material that I feel like I'm not wasting 
a beautiful resource because I conceived my idea and the design beforehand. The digital process also offers a kind of, uh, you know, milling dialogue that opens up potential that I hadn't imagined. The, the milling path, the, the way that the stone is coming to us, comes with its own spirit and energy, which is really interesting. The, the person who designed that interface between the robot and me has their mark on the stone. It's very clear. So you can choose to accept that or you can erase it completely. And it seems appropriate to me to try and keep and accept and modify and riff like a musician would. And that's always been a joy with making sculpture for me, is that sort of riffing with somebody. My mission for this project was to see what new opportunities we could find uh, mixing a material with such a long tradition such as marble and sculpting with new processes and new technologies such as robotic carving and procedural modeling and generative modeling. Sculpting is a very analog process, it's a very tangible one. So we were interested in exploring how we could bring the experience of manual ex sculpting a form from the analog world to the digital environment with generative modeling, right? So what we did for this project was we built, we built an environment where any designer can use a 3D tracker to move their hand in 3D space and then trace this virtual surface. And then we use generative modeling to convert that surface into a solid object that had the structural integrity that was required so that we could extract this unique and elegant surface out of a raw block of marble. We thought that using a tangible interface that we could move in three-dimensional space would give us more freedom than traditional interfaces like mice or like uh, touch pads uh, because sculpting is a very three-dimensional process. You want an interface that gives you that range of three-dimensional freedom. Nowadays, it's uh, to program the robot for this kind of work, like so art, art and this kind of pieces. There's a lot of tools that help you in the creation of the toolpath, but you still have to do a lot of uh, work. You have to create geometry, surfaces, everything that helps you to keep the control of the machine where you want. The material we choose is uh, an arabescato valli. We choose that material because uh, between our local material that is one of the most translucent that we have. There's also some artists, uh, they are kind of digital artists. They want to see the machine, the touch of the machine in the end on the final surface of the sculpture. So, uh, they use basically the machine as part of their creative process and not as a, a medium to create something faster. To realize this, uh, this piece for, for Autodesk, it was very challenging uh, because very, very thin. And with marble, it's not so easy to reach uh, kind of thinness. At the end of the day, we believe that with this piece, we were able to explore and to open up new possibilities to what can be done in the 21st century with a combination of high-end robotics, state-of-the-art software, generative modeling tools. Um, but on top of that, our interest in this project was to be able to create tools that other people, most people in the world could use for the same matter. So. In fact, um, we've open sourced uh, most of the tools that we did for this project. So with the hope that anybody else, artists, designers, sculptors, architects, could take those tools and then they could also participate from this wonderful experience, which is carving marble with robots.
as as part of the typical quarrying process, um, quarrying is actually not a very efficient process because the rock has so many veins and it has so many irregularities that very often a lot of scrap material, a lot of uh, broken rocks are generated. Sometimes, sometimes they even just throw them to the river. With this project, we were very interested in exploring how with software, with generative design tools, how perhaps we could give a second chance to all this material and all these pieces that are abandoned and are considered scrap and perhaps make all this process of marble carving a bit more sustainable and a bit more environmentally friendly. What we did in this project was we, we actually went to the river and we, we looked for rocks down in the river and we chose one that we liked we fished it, we took it up with a crane, and we brought it back to the fabrication laboratory. And then in the, fabric, in, the, in the space, we 3D scanned it so that we had a digital representation of this rock. We do a certain number of scans of the, of the model from different point of view. Then we have to take some reference point on the object and to align all those scans. Once aligned, we have, uh, let's say, a cloud of points of the whole surface that we can export in one of the common file formats. Once we have that, because it's digital information, you can use generative design to process that information however you want. So what we did was we wrote some algorithms so that we could propagate a pattern on top of that rock and uh, we also incorporated in those algorithms all the machine instructions that the robot need in order to carve that pattern on top of the surface. Um, that allowed us to create a process where with any input rock we could get any pattern grooved on top of that rock and therefore with procedural workflows with algorithms, with generative design, we were able to give it a second life by adding value and adding uniqueness to that object. We made something that was um, discarded and wasted, we turned it into something useful. I think what has been really exciting um, has been Autodesk's support of our project. I think that um, what has been really wonderful about that sponsorship and proposition has been to give sort of free enterprise to the participants to really explore potential ways of working and, and, and using Autodesk software as a platform and see what new can be brought forward in that, that regard. I really look forward to seeing much more experimentation, much more research and much more forward thinking from this combination of incredibly talented artists, incredibly savvy and expert engineers and people willing to innovate and push the boundaries of what's possible in this field.